Hello and welcome to a special segment on this weekend edition. We're doing a full game review of Metal Hellsinger. Both myself and the General C have played the awesome uh, Metal Hellsinger all the way through um, to its completion. General C, in fact, played the entire game yesterday in one sitting. Um, so we're going to get into it start to finish and, of course, give our impressions and let you know whether or not it's worth your time, worth your investment or worth even just renting. Um, so, first and foremost, Jen, uh, you had the uh, the a full stream yesterday trying out Metal Hellsinger after playing the demo. You weren't quite sure whether or not you were clicking with it. Uh, first of all, let's start off with what you thought of the story of the game from start to finish. How did you think <clears> that was? I really enjoyed it. It's uh, at the core of it. It's it's the story of um, revenge, the character, the the unknown. Um, just trying to get her voice back from the um, the judged uh, or judge, I think the character's name is, um, and that was really interesting. And you also have a, a character along your way that narrates that um, called Paz, and he is voiced by Troy Baker himself. I wasn't actually sure if it was Troy Baker or someone trying to do their best Troy Baker impression, and it actually turned out to be Troy Baker. So I was I was really really surprised with that. <clears throat> but yeah, like. Um, the story, it really grips you. Um, each, each beginning of each story is um, narrated. Like the, the theme of each mission is sort of narrated by Paz, Troy Baker. And the narration is done really well. <clears throat> uh, also, also the world around the story is, is something really special. Character design as well. Uh, it's yeah. something really cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, definitely a story of revenge uh story of the whole game is roughly about four-ish hours long depending on on how how long you take with that and how much of a struggle you have it does have a bit of a learning curve at start as, at the start as you could tell from me i i struggled for about an hour and a half to get in <laughs> sync with the game but once i did oh, it was so good and that character has narrates through out each mission as well um he'll, he'll say it pop up and say a few things about the, the creatures you're fighting and yeah the, the inevitability of what's going on like you do eventually learn who um who those two characters are uh, by the end of the game i won't get into those spoilers though because it's 100 percent worth investing your time into this story yeah it's a short game so um you're not going to have like a dragged out story everything is 
wraps up pretty well and there is also an after credit scene that could be pointing towards uh, maybe some DLC or a sequel. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, the, for the story for me, like you say, it's, um, it was well put together. Um, pretty simple, um, of course, being the metal, the hell singer. Um, so essentially you, you are the, the voice of, of hell, um, being able to sing all of these melodies and tracks and things like that. Um, and your voice is taken away, um, by, um, by the, as, as you'll find out in the game, by the judge, um, the red, the red judge and all of its aspects, um, and also from the gods, they essentially team up together to take your voice away. Um, as the story unfolds, of course, close to the end of the game, you understand that there is a little bit more to it than just taking your voice away, and there was a reason for it in the first place. Um, but the way the game is narrated um, throughout, as you mentioned from Paz, who was played by Troy Baker, was, was really good. Um, it reminded me of the narration from Bastion. If anybody's played the game, the, the indie game Bastion, it reminded me very much of that. Now, I don't know if it, if Troy Baker did the narration for that as well, but it sounded like exactly the same person. Um, if it isn't, then that's exactly what it sounds like, but it's brilliant because I love it that way. Um, but not only do you get these kind of narrations in between the levels, you get them before the level, you get them just at the end of the level, um, and even with, um, even with the, um, the mini games, should we say, um, they also have narration and a little story to go along with each of them to describe what realm they're the in. Torments. Yeah, the torments, that's the one. Mm. Um, yeah, I've, I've not played many of them, uh, I only played one on stream, but yeah. I'm, I'm, we'll be going back and playing those though, because, uh, they look like a lot of fun. The one I played yesterday was was a lot of fun. Um, and very as tense. It's going, yeah. <laughs> you lose your weapons in that one. So like you, you lose your pistols first, then your shotgun, and, and then your sword. And basically, it, it ends if you don't kill the, the targets you're supposed to kill. Yeah, in the set time. It's uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. really awesome. Um, but yes, the story is it's short, sweet. It is, like you say, a story of revenge, but there's a little bit more to it when you get to the end of the game as well. Um, overall, um, a good little story for an indie game. Um, as Jen pointed out as well, it's not a massive game. Um, depending on your ability... It's a game that really does value your time. Yeah. And, and that is, in this day and age, when there is so many games, so many movies, so many TV shows to watch, that, that is perfect. That it, it didn't drag the story out. Like a lot of games do, they drag the stories out and they become stale by the end. This game hit the sweet spot for that and it's obviously priced at that point as well. So it's not like a, a $70 game that's going to take you for granted with your money. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, 100%. And obviously the, I was the gonna, oh, it's sorry. Game Pass. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. If you have Game Pass, of course, it is available there. Um, even saying that though, and we will kind of touch on that, um, it is available on Game Pass, so everybody with a Game Pass um, subscription, you do have access to this now. Um, so go out and enjoy it. Um, even when it uh, subsequently leaves Game Pass in the future, uh, which it will at some point, um, the game is available at a very um, reasonable price. It's uh, 35 or £33 pounds, uh, British. I think it's $35 on PlayStation. Um, and uh, I think it's $25 on Steam. Um, so if you uh, if you want to pick it up, I uh, that is the price. I think it's a very reasonable for the amount of content you get. Um, and the game uh, and the soundtrack, we will get into the soundtrack a little bit further on because that is uh, that needs to be spoken about. But um, one thing we will speak about first... It's also worth noting that it's on Game Pass PC as well. So if you have yes. PC and you have Game Pass on PC... Go check it out. Yeah, good show. Um, one thing we'll get into first, though, is uh, the... I wouldn't say accessibility, but the ease of getting used to the game or how hard it can be um, and the calibration. Um, now, thankfully, unlike the demo, um, the game has a calibration tool. Um, so you can actually essentially sync the um, video latency and the audio latency to the beat so at least you've got it right and it feels good for you so it makes it easier to attack to the beat um it can take a couple of goes to get it right though um other than that me a little while yeah 
There's also three difficulty options. You've got lamb, you've got goat, and what was the final one? Um, I'm blanking on the final one. Um, beast. That's the one. Beast. Lamb, yep, goat, one, beast. and beast. Um, mm -hmm. So, of course, lamb is going to be a bit more forgiving on the beat matching. Um, goat is not. <laughs> and again, beast, you have pretty much have to be precise on the beat matching every time. Mm -hmm. Um, you will get um, only one resurrection, um, or allowed one resurrection. You only get two on goat, and you get three on lamb. Um, so depending on how many times you die, um, of course, in the game, you get an ability to resurrect, but you do lose um, your souls or whatever it is, your points, essentially. Um, you have to sacrifice a, a certain amount of points, and depending on what difficulty level you are, depends how much points you sacrifice from your overall score at the end. Um, but how did you find the calibration tool? Um, I was kind of in a rush at first, so because I just wanted to get into the game, yeah. So I didn't really focus on the calibration, but then I took a moment to to get that right. Um, and I would hundred percent recommend you get that right first. Don't be like me and rush into things because you just want to get to the game, the meat and the potatoes of it. Yeah. Take that moment, get your calibration right, because it'll be so much more fun when you get that right. The timings will sync up. It'll get you used to hearing the, the expecting the beats and your, your visual cues as well, because there's arrows that come along the screen. Each side is sort of like in the middle of the screen. They're coming along. They're also your visual sort of um, prompts when to press the button. Yeah. But you've also got your audio prompts with the beat of the music. Yeah. And, and personally, really I was going to say personally, I'd recommend, and you recommended this as well, but. I recommend you wear headphones for this. It's going to be a lot easier headphones to do the beat matching. Needed. I, I, I will say, um, I got up this morning, I played this on my Series X in the living room. I didn't have headphones on, and it was a lot harder to sync up with the beat because obviously you're not hearing the music in your, your ears. It's not as clear. Um, so, yeah, get yourself uh, some headphones on when you play this. Yeah. 100%. And I, that's, I was saying this to Jen as well when he was streaming it yesterday. I said, try and not focus on the lines in the middle because when you get too focused on the lines and you start missing the beat. Mm. And if you just listen for the beat, then you then your tacks are like on point. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was doing it a lot. Um, and it, it also distracted me from the, the enemies on the screen. I was too busy focusing on those arrows. So don't always focus on those arrows. I will say focus on those arrows if you lose sync to the music because it will help you dial back in to syncing up with the music yeah and then you'll be you'll be golden again yeah 100 percent. if you do if you need to so essentially if you're in an area and you've just lost sync try and get to an area where there is no enemies and get your sync back and mm -hmm. then go to fight again um, i also recommend at the each, each start of each mission take a moment to listen to the music to get yourself prepared to the to sync up with it because that will help as well um and that was something that uh, Tony mentioned in my Twitch chat. He said, take a moment to listen to the songs at the beginning of each mission and get yourself synced up with the beat then. Because then you'll, once you do get closer to the enemies, you'll be, you'll be ready for them off the bat and not struggling to listen to the beat while you're fighting them. Yeah. And of course, the thing with this game as well is essentially, and as you see here, sometimes you can't shoot the thing because you're not meant to, you're just meant to take out the enemies. Um, but if you're not in sync, it either does no damage or you can't hit anything. Um, so, make of course, being on sync means you can do damage and you will damage the enemy. Um, sometimes you'll be firing and firing and firing and they just don't die. It's because you're not on sync. Um, and it does like two damage, three damage, instead of like 100,000 damage. <laughs> so as soon as you get on sync... Because a lot of... Yeah, a lot of enemies give you those visual prompts as well to the beat of the music. And yeah. Those um, red crystals, the chaos crystals, they pulse within the beat as well of each song. So they're like visual cues for you too. Yeah. Um, but it, yeah, pretty much everything in the game is, has been designed to move or, um, or attack to the beat. Um, so you'll see the fire on the sides as well. That's going to the beat. Mm -hmm. The enemies move to the beat side to side like these guys. Um, some of them will have shockwave attacks and they'll go to the beat. Um, I think even like the pickups that um, boost your your times up to 16, yeah. they also move in the beat as well. 
Yeah, and uh, for the special attacks, as you saw there as well, with the right uh, the right stick, that's also at the beat. So you may have to make sure you do that. The beat, the reload. Of course, you get quick reloads if you hit it on the beat. Um, you don't get any quick reload if you don't. Um, so everything is designed to work around doing things to the beat, and it, and it does when it works well. You get really into uh, into a good loop. Um, we'll jump straight into that. Actually, the actual gameplay itself. How did you find it once you were once you were in the thick of it, um, and you you were you were on your in in yeah, should we say on on a roll, and you got everything mm. beaten up uh, and and matching and and going well. How did you find the the gameplay? Once you sync up everything, it feels smooth. Um, initially, uh, I had to get used to the uh, movement of the game, which felt a bit off for me, being being used to playing like most first-person shooters on PC in recent years. Um, switching back to a controller was a bit of a um, bit of pain to get used to the, the speed of the movement. Uh, probably could have done with adjusting that sensitivity myself. Yeah, so, um, that's something I would recommend as well. Don't don't be an idiot like me. Get your get your sensitivity dialed in <clears throat> to where you're you're feeling comfortable. Yeah, it felt really fast, fluid. Um, once you synced up and you you were hitting the shots and jumping around and and dashing as well, everything just felt perfect. And then to add the music onto that, it really helps you as well um, with your movement and. You just you'll find yourself head banging as well. And yeah. You're just in full full sync like with the game at that point, and it was a really special feeling because I don't play. I've never played any rhythm like game like this before. Yeah. Uh, and it, it just felt unique and stand out. Yeah, it's the one thing I found as well. Like it's, it's as soon once you've gotten like not just the rhythm, but as soon as you've kind of got into the got into it really and you and you're going with the music and you start a head bang and things like that and you've 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 got your sync going and everything's working mm. for you and you're jumping around like a madman and dodging left to right and everything yeah, just feels the you feel like a badass when you're in sync feel so much better oh and, yeah and if you lose sync there, there will be moments if you get frustrated with games where you lose sync but as long as you keep your call you'll get back into sync pretty quick yeah, you feel like an absolute badass when you when everything's going the way you need it to, and and enemies are dropping left, right, and center. You feel like it's going insane, and the music's pumping. Mm. And when you get in the sixteen times multiplier, the vocals kick in, and all the all the different instruments. So at two times so you've good. got like the basic melody. Mm. At four times, a little bit of the guitar kicks in. At eight times, you got like the um, the the kind of guitar riff starts to kick in and then at 16 times the vocal and everything kicks in uh it's... and then when that starts to go down you're like oh no don't no no it no go. quickly so like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah um like, moving on to the the weapons gameplay wise so um, yeah I didn't really go much on the shotgun it was, it was okay but once you get those revolvers <laughs> it becomes perfect the yeah. revolvers are amazing um again unlocking the crossbow didn't really use that too much. I went straight back to the revolvers because I was like, no, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think I need a bit more practice with those weapons before uh, before I get get proper used to them. Uh, but yeah, the revolvers, remembering them from the demo, um, I just loved using them in the demo, and I was like, these are going to be my my main weapon throughout the game, and they were. I didn't really use any of the other weapons apart from the sword from time to time with specific enemy types that are a bit infuriating with the guns yeah <clears throat> it was um it was it was definitely for me the as as same as yourself like i found the sword to be nearly useless like it was impossible mm. to get it to the beat no matter how much i tried um i don't know what it was about it, it just didn't didn't feel right and i couldn't get it to the beat um the shotgun though the shotgun i did every like two beats and that's the way I figured out how to use the shotgun. So instead of just trying to like shoot every beat, because the shotgun's slower, it was like ding, ding, ch, ding, ding, ch, ding, ding, ch. So then it was like every two beats instead of every beat, which you can do with the pistols. Um, mm. So, one, and again, once you've got that on and the, and the shotgun, which can deal like multiple damage to a couple of enemies, um, and you've got the shotgun, and you can quickly switch to the pistols, and you can go a little bit quicker with the pistols. And because you've got you've got two of them, so it's a lot easier to do that. 
Um, it didn't feel like I mean, it was I'm just biased. Busy. They're revolvers. I love anything to do with revolvers. You are 100%. <laughs> I ended up using them more. <laughs> and of course, each one of these weapons, um, which is also another bonus, has an ultimate attack. Um, so, of course, the shotgun has like um, essentially like a projectile, a big projectile that does like m massive damage to everything that's in its path. Um, the pistols, the revolvers, are awesome. You get like a duplicate version of you that stands there, doesn't get damaged, and just keeps attacking everything. Um, it also yeah, helps sort of like your a, multiplayer. A up. Sentry turret type thing. Like yeah. Place it down, and it'll it'll do a lot of damage to enemies, um, giving you a chance to press the right stick and maybe regenerate some health. Yeah. For killing an enemy. Yeah, and it's like I say, the and the good thing about that, of course, is it keeps the multiplayer up. Um, so when it's attacking, the, it's keeping the 16 times going when you're doing, you're trying to do damage to other things, or if you're plonked down in a boss fight, like, like, uh, just jumped into one screen there, um, for uh, one of the aspects, um, you can chuck it down, it'll take care of all the little minions whilst you keep attacking the big boss. Um, mm. so it's really handy, um, and every weapon has them. Now, there's a few more weapons, of course, so you've got as the skull, which fires a singular round of kind of fireball um it also has a lightning attack and um, that rains down lightning on on the enemies um i, I didn't actually use that to yeah be honest. it's yeah it, you tend to find once you've got your your favorite weapons you stick to them all the way through the game because you've got you've got yeah. used to being in sync um you also get um there is a like a crossbow um that you get which again files explosive rounds um, I'm not sure on the special attack for that. I didn't actually end up using that. Um, and of course, I the I final used it one. Once. I think it was like electrifying sort of stuff. I might be right. wrong there, though. Right. Okay. It was only the one time. I think I did it by accident. So yeah. it wasn't like I intentionally did it. Yeah. That's fair. Um, and the last one, which I didn't use at all, um, was the two kind of uh, scepters that you get. Hmm. Like. Uh, uh, and I just don't know. Like again, didn't just didn't feel right. Like trying to do a hack and slash to the beat didn't work. <laughs> it just yeah. I will say that threw me off as well. Switching back to those, they were like a melee weapon. Yeah. I, I didn't get on with them. Uh, like a lot of the weapons in this game, I, I ended up switching back to the revolvers just because it's easier to keep them to the beat with the revolvers. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But overall, of course, there is a weapon for everybody. You might find that you. You, you do really well with the the sides or the or the sword um you might find you do well with a crossbow um but for me and jen mm. we've both found it's at least pistols as the primary and shotgun as secondary um and i think i think we're just gonna stay like that um but yeah, over... there, there is um an achievement for killing the boss with melee but you can just shoot that boss up until the last hit and then hit it with melee yes uh, to get that and it still unlocks because i that's what I did last night on on stream. It yeah, worked perfectly. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Of course, I think you've you unlocked them all at about halfway through the game, so you've unlocked all your weapons by that point. Mm. Um, so that's about two hours in, um, hour and a half, two hours into the game. Um, the levels are about fifteen, twenty minutes long each. Um, so they're not super yeah. long. Yeah. Nice length. Around about that length, yeah. And to be um, fair, I would say as well of that, uh, and everybody that's gonna gonna, gonna play the game. The length of the levels is right because it's that intense when you get going and there's that many things happening on screen and you need to focus that much on the beat uh, and mm -hmm. shooting to the beat and dodging and trying to attack that I think any if you if it was really long and there were like doom style levels with like 30 40 minutes long I think you'd be super tired <laughs> oh you get you get sweaty hands as well and like I think it was the final mission like I got hand cramp almost through most of that mission yeah so like by the end of it i was like shaking my hand up in the air to to uncramp my hand <clears throat> yeah 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 so um, whilst i will say about the weapons though um yeah you won't be able to select your secondary until you've unlocked all the weapons so that's um something that might throw you off at first because it did yeah. with me a little bit so I, I couldn't select a secondary but that's the reason for that and once you complete the game you can go back to the not the tutorial mission the mission the main mission after that yeah. And use all your unlockable weapons, all your unlocked weapons there. Yeah, yeah. And aside from weapons, you also get things called sigils. Um, sigils are um, found in for completing tasks um, known as torments. 
So underneath each main stage, and so the one that we're going into on screen now is Stygia, which is also one of the soundtracks. So each one of them is pretty much named after the soundtrack. Um, but Stygia, uh, which is our favourite soundtrack from the game, aside from Surge, because I think Surge's track is awesome as well. Um, but aside from I, that... I had that song on repeat for too many hours today, <laughs> and I still ain't bored of it. <laughs> Underneath each main stage, um, you also have three um, separate little stages, and each one of those can unlock a sigil. Um, sigils are essentially buffs for yourself. So it could be that the you never go below two times multiplier, or you um, for every um, attack that you do, it gains um, a 0.5. Well, every perfect attack that you do, or on-beat attack, it gains 0.5% um, for your ultimate. Um, so essentially build your ultimate attack up very quickly. And it means that you kill like four, five, six enemies, and you've already got your ultimate ready again. So that, that helps. Um, but yeah, there's a lot. I've only of... unlocked the one because I only did the one torment, and yeah. uh, I haven't actually used that yet because uh, I only played it the one time this morning. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so afterwards, of course, when you've completed the game, when you've done all your torments and things like that, um, then you can attach whatever weapons you want onto any level and whatever sigil you want to any level. Essentially, when you qu equip your loadouts, um, and then of course you have the both the worldwide leaderboard um the your kind of european leaderboards or north american whatever it is and then you have your friends list leaderboard um and of course what you have to realize for this game as well is it is an accumulative score so you'll start the game off you you'll start building a score then and then you get into the next level and then that score add to the next score and then you'll keep building up and building it up and building it up but if you get damaged if you die, whatever it is that you do all the way through to the end of the game, that is your accumulative score at the end is affected. So once you've unlocked everything, don't, like, don't worry about your score initially because your score is going to be pretty crap the first time you go through unless you're like unbelievable at the game. <laughs> but as soon as you go through that second run um, and you've got your favourite weapons, that's when the, that's when you should start like thinking about what kind of score you're going to go after. But um, yeah, it's... It's such an addictive game, yeah. and there's like this, you can replay the levels as many times as you want. And when you've got your favorite weapons on, it's going to get even more fun. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 really good. Um, the torments themselves are um, so the secondary stages, the ones that you can play as long as the as well as the main levels, um, revolve around uh, killing. Um, the essentially giants so the behemoths they're called actually sorry um so you've got like kill 10 behemoths but um your weapons essentially you don't get more ammo your ammo does run out and then your weapons run out um and then yeah, eventually the you just left with a sword idea. yeah so that's the first one you do but you've got to kill 10 of them within the time limit if you don't then you don't get the sigil and you have to get max marks in order to get the sigil um second I think it goes you've got to kill six eight and then ten and then you've got to complete it to, to unlock the um, sigil yep uh, there's other levels um where it's essentially like a fiesta on halo um so essentially you you start with your pistol you kill somebody with that and it auto switches to another weapon and you've got to kill somebody with that and then it auto switches to another weapon and you've got to kill somebody with that and it keeps going around in circles until you've killed 50 people um, but the enemies can vary because they just keep spawning in random enemies. So it could be someone that moves really quickly, like a little, um, like a mantis. Essentially, there's a couple of enemies in the game, and we'll speak about the enemy types as well. Um, there's a couple of enemies in the game that are like praying mantis. Um, two versions of them. Um, one of them is kind of just super quick and attacks you um, really quickly. Another one's got lightning, etc. But you'll have all of these different type of enemy types coming at you. It, you could end up just with a sword having to kill it, even though it's an impossibility. Um, but that's how you, the torments go. And there's a, such a, a variety of different types of things that you need to do in order to get your sigils. Um, and get these new buffs for your character. It's, uh, again, additional content. Really good content as well. Um, but you'll have fun doing it. Um, what did you make of the, yeah. the one that you played? <clears throat> Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I wasn't expecting to lose my weapons uh, for it, but <laughs> yeah, I ma managed to complete that, getting all ten the first time. So I was pretty lucky with that. Yeah.
<clears throat> but yeah, it's a, a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't obviously had a chance to try the sigils out, but once I get back on this game and unlock more of them, um, I'll get a chance to use them then. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, next, I think we'll dive into character types, um, the artwork or character's character art, um, and the boss types as well. Um, we we both mentioned this, of course. Aside from the fact that they've they've designed it in a way where the the enemies move to the beat, essentially, which is also awesome. Um, it creates a get a little bit more um, kind of involvement in the game as well, where kind of everything feels like it's it's working together uh, in harmony to, to make this awesome experience. Um, the actual mm -hmm. enemy designs are also awesome, um, as well as the characters. Um, of course, the lead character, um, the female known as Unknown, um, is is who you play. Um, obviously, you've, you've lost your voice and you, you're fighting to get it back. Um, but the, the design work that they've done around both the, the lead character, um, the enemy types, and the bosses as well, specifically the final boss, which is uh, absolutely badass, um is is phenomenal um what did you make of the the kind of character designs and things uh so so many different uh enemy types in this like you've got the uh, starting ones which are called marionettes the, the basic really easy to handle easy to deal with uh, yeah like cannon like, fodder um, <laughs> difficult is as ones with like uh, they fire projectiles that yeah they're i think they're called cambians and then you've got the behemoths which are the tall like things that sort of leap and jump at you with a sword and then you have like a different variation of, of that behemoth yeah it comes into the game later you've got the stalker things which you mentioned are a bit like prone mantises that are really fast and, and then there's like a uh, another alternate version of that that shoots like electric stuff at the ground near you and you've got these like flying bugs as well that spit acid so there's loads of different like variations and most of the enemies all do different things yeah uh, to keep you on your toes, basically. Uh, stay out of the acid if you get acid spat. Yeah, same with the electric. Um, the boss battles were pretty interesting as well because each of the aspects slightly handled different. Yeah. And as you get further into the game, um, there's a really cool one where it's, it's sort of like that cup game where you've got three cups on the table and there's a ball in one cup and you've got to keep track of where that cup is moving. Yeah. Basically. Because... Two of them are just decoys, and they can do damage to you, but you can't do damage to them. You can only do damage to that one that you need to keep track of, and I really liked that. That was probably one of my favorite um, of the sub-boss battles. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. And then you've obviously got the big boss battle at the end. I uh, won't go into too many details on that. But, but big boss battle is an it's, understatement. <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite the boss battle. Um, it'll, it'll require you to move around a lot go up high go down low um, and you're also accompanied by a great track uh, featuring surge from system of a down and that just makes that boss battle so much better yeah it was brilliant i also <clears> like <throat> the introduction of the um the angels into the game as well because i did that's not yeah. something i'd expect i almost forgot about the angels yeah so you've got essentially even angels they're not fallen angels they're actually angels to, to mm. essentially that come and help you to well come and help hell stop you from getting your voice back um but their designs yeah, are awesome as like, well uh, sort of light beams that you know like ethereal light beams uh yeah obviously like based around those heavenly type of beings and their, their powers of light yeah it's absolutely awesome and again I think it's just the, the design and the thought of each of them and the fact that every one of them has different kinds of attacks. Um, so, of course, you, you'll see them on screen. You'll see these little little guys dodging around. They're like cannon fodder, essentially. They don't really do much. They've got to get really up close and personal to do any damage to you. Um, but mm. it, obviously, you, they never get that close because they, they don't move quick enough, should, should we say. They just flop mm. their arms at you. Um, the next guys have yeah. got like cannon at arms that kind of fling grenade type of things at you. Um, yeah, and then there's a shielded version of them which can be a bit oh, of a, the shielded a pain in the one. Butt. Yeah, so shielded one is a pain in the arse. Dance around them, yeah, and shoot them. <laughs> but, but they they have their like arm that comes up by the side of the shield, and that's one of their weak points. But yeah. definitely recommend uh, not staying still around those because you really need to dart around and try and get around them to to kill them. Yeah, getting up close and personal with the shield guys is definitely the best course of action. Mm. Um, I will say, 
it does when they're on their own, they're uh, they're not as bad, and it's pretty easy to deal with them with the sword. But again, it's harder to keep into the debate with the sword. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Completely agree. <coughs> completely agree. Um, but overall, enemy types, character types, they're both really well designed. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of di you've got to think of a different way to, to kind of kill each of them. Yes, you've got to. Of course, all you're doing is shooting your weapon, but you've got to think of how to move and where to move and how to get like dance around them and things like that. You can't stand still for some of them. You've got to move. You've got to keep moving, otherwise you will die. Um, yeah, that's definitely the the aim of the game is not to stay still because you will get overwhelmed with the amount of enemies that will be coming at you. Yeah. Um, you also have like when fighting all the enemy types, this uh, it'll pop up a prompt to press the right stick and that you also have to keep into sync with the beat with otherwise it won't do the um the attack but when you do press it and time it up you will kill the enemy and gain health back so yeah that's something i i recommend you'll you'll find yourself sometimes accidentally killing them by shooting them that one little extra time so you really have to like be careful and and i guess in places remember how many hits it takes for certain enemies and then press the right stick to time it well so you're constantly gaining that health back when you need it and that comes in handy within the boss fights as well doing that yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. it's absolutely brilliant um the next thing i'm kind of want to dive into here as well is the the actual world designs now i thought the world designs were absolutely brilliant um mm. of course they're, they're, they're not overly uh, they're not overly large they're pretty linear designs but the the, the designs of the worlds are um are beautiful um again artistically really well done and what did you make of them yeah i really liked them um they're called hells uh, each hell is uh designed slightly different from uh, the next there's one that's got like pyramids floating around like broken pyramids and then um uh, stygia is sort of like a broken cityscape uh, hell they, they all sort of stand out um, each aspect is also like designed to fit that that um, hell so they will slightly look different in their variations um, their attacks become slightly different as well yeah the aspect in one of them has like these i think it's six floor pieces no i think it's nine floor pieces and um they'll move as uh, that boss fight progresses and there's also like there's winds that pushed you into the middle so you've got to be aware that the platform you're standing on is not going to drop from underneath you and that, that's a pretty fun boss battle but yeah the world design is is really unique um, it didn't feel like it was just a doom uh, copy and paste it, it really was crafted well it took their time to make sure that there's all these areas that you can go in between especially in the boss battles as well yeah to they're like safe spaces where you ain't going to get hit uh, you can dodge behind and stuff like that so they yeah and that's your tend to find is i was going to say the further you get with some of the bosses the less safe space you have um mm. so they start to kind of shrink it to make it a bit harder for you so there was that and mm. you'll remember the one that that kind of is a bit further on with the spinning plates um mm. that is like there's no way to hide on that <laughs> yeah yeah it's like, they're like cogs and they're moving around um, that that well, gets it, tense. it gets even more tense when they drop enemies in there and and uh, the health, bombs on the floor you'll, and... you'll find you'll use the health pretty quick and you need to like do the right uh stick click in move to get health from enemies and that that's pretty tense i think that's the only place i died in a boss battle yeah so yeah yeah that, that was pretty tricky that one <clears throat> but yeah, most of the, the boss areas do have like small areas of cover that you can go behind when the boss does their barrage attacks. So um, they're very well thought out. The boss boss layers, uh, I guess you'd call them. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. And, and the world design is just amazing. Like burning landscapes and the one with the pyramids. Frozen well, hellscapes, really cool. barren landscapes, mm -hmm. big pyramids and things. And yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's awesome. Um, it's just really well designed, like I say, for the the entire mm. game, start to finish. Um, of course, the yeah, the really boss, well crafted. Yeah, 
the bosses, um, the, the what known as aspects, until you get to the final boss, of course, the judge. Um, or a bit like bull, bullet hell mixed with um, like a rhythm doom shooter. Um, so it's it's a as you can see on the kind of screen there, it's it's a mixture of many things <laughs> that you need to do to beat them or dodge them, and they've all got different attacks and they all do different things. It's just yeah, phenomenal. Really good fun. Really good fun. Um, one of the last sections we need to speak about here before we got on to our uh, our verdict. The soundtrack. We can't not speak okay. about the soundtrack because Amazing. it is one of the best video game it's soundtracks so good. ever. Um, like instantly from loading up the menu, um, you know it's going to be a good soundtrack, and then getting into that that first level and then second level Stygia. Oh, that that song is just Chef's Kiss. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I had it I had it on repeat for too many hours today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is. It's, it's um, such a good soundtrack. Um, so many big names in metal music. You've got Surge from System of a Down. Um, just, just so many. Um, yeah, so System of a Down, you've got Lamb of God, you've got Trivium. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's so, so many awesome artists. And again, um, that's with their own band. So they've got all of the lead singers from every one of these awesome metal bands. Um, to essentially do lead vocals for for their band, um, Two Feathers, um, who produced the soundtrack itself. Um, so Two Feathers do the the actual um, awesome soundtrack, um, and these awesome vocal um, these singers from all these different metal bands do the the vocals for it. Um, yeah, they've they've lent their voices to the to the game, the talent yeah. of of Two Feathers, and once you get into the game the soundtrack really speaks for itself and it's one of the greatest soundtracks in in gaming history i think in my personal opinion it, yeah every song is is really good but there's those few songs in there that you could just listen on on repeat over and over and, yeah and stygia is is that one for me and it's to find stygia and then there's like three tracks off the belt near the end that are also brilliant um mm. You've got Stygia, which is the main one, and I just that one on repeat all the time. Of course, you've got the very finale, so the very final boss battle. You've got Surge with No Tomorrow. Yeah, that song's No Tomorrow, yeah. Um, and just before that, I think you've got Trivium and Soilwork. I think they both do the tracks just before that, and both of them are awesome as well. Um, but really, the soundtrack start to finish is just phenomenal. Um, and it, it's, it just makes you feel more of a badass as well, the way they've, all mm. the way through. Um, it's definitely a soundtrack that gets you pumped up. I can imagine a lot of people are going to throw this into like gym mix and just oh, go 100%, work out. One hundred percent. It's it's like I say. It's not even just a case of it being a game soundtrack now. Like it is an actual full album. Like um, I, I, there's only like eight stages in the game, but and you think there's only going to be eight songs, but there isn't. There's about fourteen, fifteen tracks all together that you unlock mm -hmm. because. The final yeah, some stage. Some of the tr uh, track, uh, not tracks. Some of the stages have a couple of songs. Yeah, so it'll go. For, you'll have, have the full one. stage, and then you'll get the boss battle, and that has a, a different track again. So the like, like I said, the last boss battle. You, I think you start with maybe Trivium, a Lamb of God, or something for the main stage, and then Surge kicks in with with obviously with his track um, for the actual final fight. Um, but. You can go into it afterwards. Fifteen tracks in the, yeah. in the album. Yeah. So you can go into it in the music in the in the um, the menus afterwards at the top. You go into mm. the credits section essentially, and you can s literally play the album start to finish. Um, it, it's got an auto play. It's got a, a full album selector essentially. You can put things on repeat. You can just sit there and listen to music in the background. It's. I, I didn't expect it to have a repeat button. Yeah. That's, that's so cool. <laughs> Like it's, it's just something you don't expect to have in a game. Like, yeah. Just even the soundtrack, even being in the game, is is something you don't see in in a lot of games. Yeah. I think going forward, a lot of companies should put the soundtrack for their game within the game itself and just allow you to to go back and. And put we've got to see as well songs on throughout that game. Not not just that, and we've got to give them extra plaudits for this. Um, the they've went out of their way to ensure that the both the game. The soundtrack, um, everything. The soundtrack specifically is 
is um, copyright free essentially so um, you can go out you can stream it as much as you like you can do videos on it as much as you like and you'll never get flagged if you're a streamer um, that yeah, is another we, step above worry that. About is, turning on a stream safe playlist or anything like that. Yeah, it's a whole another step above that. I don't I haven't seen anybody else do that before. Um, we've seen, of course, the likes of Forza do a, a safe option, and they um, had one radio station you could use, and um, that was the drum and bass station. Um, and you put it on that, and that's the kind of one you get. Um, but to have a full metal album of fifteen tracks. That have some of the best metal artists in the world singing on it with that where you're not going to get flagged you're not going to have issues kind of listening to it on stream or anything like that that is just another level that i didn't expect from an indie studio yeah um, uh, it, it should really set the standard going forward for anyone making games that is a big company at least this is an indie company and an indie company going to that level of extent to make a soundtrack where a streamer isn't going to get in trouble for streaming the game. They're going to feel safe knowing that they can stream the game from start to finish in one sitting, listening to the entire soundtrack, and they're not going to get 100 DMCA strikes or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> it should really set the tone going forward in the gaming industry that we've got people that are going to stream our games, help us advertise our games. We need a playlist for that type of content. That is decent and and this really is one of the best soundtracks ever and you wouldn't expect it from from an indie company no not at all <laughs> not at all uh, absolutely phenomenal um but with that we'll get into our final verdict um for me it is uh it is a, a must play um especially for metal heads <laughs> if you love metal music um and you love shooters in general um no doubt if you're an actual, a true connoisseur of metal music, you'll already have the ability to kind of tap to the beat um, or, or know how to head bop to the beat or anything like that. So it'll come second nature once you've kind of got it, once you realise it's just doing what you do with your head to the beat with your finger on the trigger, you'll notice you'll be able to play that game pretty well. But to me, it's an absolute must play. And um, whether that's purchasing it, whether it's playing it on Game Pass, um, or anything in between um, it's definitely definitely recommended um, I would say as well it's it's also I think having a shorter full playthrough time benefits the game as well because it's it's not like you have to invest all of your time into it but you'll tend to find you'll probably end up placing more time into the game than you need to complete it anyway there's so much to do there's so many times you can go back and try and beat your higher scores um, overall yeah, absolute must play from me and uh, highly recommend it. What about yourself? I would say it's a, a highly recommended must play from me as well. If I was still doing my pass or play series, it would get a, a high must play recommendation from me. Um, there's value for money in this game as well. Uh, value for your time. It's not, like I said, one of them games that is dragged out to like 20 plus hours that becomes stale by the end of the game. It really treasures um, the gamer that's playing the game and the time. Uh, again, I would recommend if you're getting into this, don't do what I did and rush the calibration just to get into the game because you'll have a bad time initially. Take those uh, few minutes to, to take the time, get the calibration right, get your sensitivity right and you'll get into this game and you'll, you'll really enjoy it. But for me, I struggled for the uh, first hour, maybe a bit, to get into sync with the game. But once you do get into sync, it, it's just chef's kiss. It's perfect. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So yes, yeah, I, I was thoughts. left wanting, wanting more, wanting more. Even though, yeah, even though I, I sat there for four hours on stream playing the game, I was left wanting more. I could have easily have sat there for another two plus hours playing more of this. Yeah, and I hope there is DLC, or I hope there is a sequel in the work, a sequel in the works, um, because I I can see myself playing a lot more of this. And who knows, they could get on the uh, on the next uh, mm. the next one in terms of artists. Um, mm. Yeah, it's it is it is a really great fun game. Um, I didn't actually have any bugs or anything with it. 
Come to think of it, no, there was, there was no bugs. Uh, oh, I, I tell a lie, I did have one. Um, it was one of the behemoths. It was kind of glitching out. Didn't know what he was doing. That was <laughs> it. That was the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but all in all, yeah, really, really good fun. Um, highly recommend playing it. Um, of course, pick it up if you want to or not. Um, you can play it, like you say, on PC Game Pass or Xbox Game Pass. It's available on PlayStation 4. Uh, and Steam as well as PlayStation 5 and series consoles and previous gen consoles. Um, again, for the price of $25 or £25 on Steam, um, £33 um, or $35 um, on console or again as part of Game Pass for PC and Xbox. Um, but highly recommend it. I hope you enjoyed this review, of course. Um, but uh, thank you for watching. I'm gonna go to the hospital.